in that way. And, and I want to remind us that it's important to see our own selves that way. Um, I'll speak for myself, but I know it holds true for others as well. Um, I'm often very self-critical. Um, and so it's important to see ourselves as beautiful for ourselves. And when we hear that inner litany going on of all the things I have to do, should have done, didn't do, remember to see ourselves beautiful. Well, one person whom I see is very beautiful. And he sees others as beautiful because he takes beautiful photographs of them, is Christian Hayden. He says the most significant thing to know about him is that he is an ethical culture leader in training, which means you are stuck from here for you are stuck with hearing from him for a while. Okay, he said that. I'm reading what he The second most important thing is that he fell in love with photography recently, so you might hear about that too. Christian is a full-time facilitator, very part-time poet and striving to be a 24-7 humanist. He also spent a year in Ghana with the Humanist Service Corps and was awarded the Mosler Fellowship in 2016. He's a very active member of the Philadelphia Society. Um, and during the time that our colleague uh, Hugh has the summer off, I, I know that you've been doing a whole lot of stuff in Philadelphia. So I really appreciate that you're here with us and you're gonna be doing poetry with us. So welcome. Welcome, Christian. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to start with a little bit of context. Um, the reason why I sort of created or sort of developed this, this exercise was um, as part of the Mazar Fellowship, Fellowship, I was t I, I put I wanted to explore what it would look like for ethical culture on Sundays to in the platform to be an experience, an experience that was flatter, more circular and kind of took elements of the colloquy, but made it the main sort of focal experience. And so here, this today is one of the results of that. I came up with about 10 different, uh, I say, I like to call them experiences, but exercises is one, um, one way to put it, that strive to meet that goal. And what it would be look like to, what would it look like to practice being an ethical, ethical culturist during our time together, right? So one might say, what does poetry have to do with that? Well, I want you to think about that as you go through this today. I want you to think about why, why are we doing this? What might we gain from this, right? What are you feeling? What are other people feeling? So being aware of that as we move through this experience. So if you notice, on your chairs, there's a pink piece of paper, a pen, and some post-it notes. How many former educators or educators do we have in the room? OK, great. See, this might feel at home for you all. Um, for, 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 for the first part, how long do I have? Oh, you have about 25 minutes. 25 minutes, OK. For the first part, I want you all to take those post-it notes and the pen. And I want you to, there are poems around the walls. And I want you to write after you read a poem. You don't have to do it on every poem. But when something strikes you or resonates with you powerfully, I want you to write a word or a thought that comes to mind. I would ask that you not write the line, more the feeling that it gives you or what it calls from you, from memory or um, from your heart. Does that make sense? Okay, if there are folks who have trouble walking, I have printed out copies and I can also give you a post-it 
and um, some post-its to write on. If you need more post-its, I have also some more post-its around, okay? So I invite you to, 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 to mindfully walk around and read the poems. They're, they start over here. You don't have to start in any particular place. I tried to space them out. But uh, one word or a sentence of thought. Uh, sorry, one second. Also, did anyone bring a printed copy of a poem? If you did, can you give them to me so I can hang them up? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Every time. Post a note by the poem. Thank you. Get some water. You all were doing a lot of, actually, a lot of work in this uh, in this heat. It's probably the most challenging conditions I've ever led. This. Oh, we can start turning around. We're gonna we're gonna hear from other groups. I know you all. If you want to get some water, I know you actually were doing a lot a little bit of work right there. So you might be a little parched. No. No. Okay. That's okay. I just don't want anybody passing out on me, okay? <laughs> All right. This this tape this tape Yeah. Right. 
Two more poems. Richard, speed it up. All right. So folks will start coming back to their seats. We're going to close out. We're going to share our creations. Do, do we have a reader for each group? Does it, each group have a reader? Do we have another mic? The mic's right there, right? I feel like there are a lot of perfectionists in the corner. It's okay. All right, so let's, I'm glad you're proud of it though. Let's, let's have my job. Maggie's giving me the clock symbol. So, can someone from each group come up uh, and read, uh, volunteer to read? One person? We have a volunteer from each group. I know we have a couple performers here. Maggie. All right. All right, everyone. So let's 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 uh, let's sit and, and, and take in our co-creations. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll start here. Soft breezes, ice cold lemonade, open fire irons. Is childhood ever easy? The sun, the sea, moves in a rhythm of uncertainty. A world without hate, a country without boundaries. Love is the perfect awareness of our, of our interdependence, cooking healing herbs into the human soup. Sea and the sky on a summer's 
day, bodies interpret feelings, and peace as love prevails. Thank you. So I come back to my question that I posed before we started, is why did we do this? Any ideas? US yeah, well, why? Oh, because I said so? So binding place between community and personal. Because <laughs> it'd be really great rouse to just steal the best, you know, the poems from these and make it my own book of poetry. To find answers. To find answers. To get, in, to, get, to get in touch with our feelings. To get in touch with our feelings. We got a few more folks. So I mean there was no right answer to that question. I mean I hope you know but I hope I hope that in one of the, the sort of downsides of this activity is that there's a lot of beautiful poems on the wall that span so many different identities, places, and stories. And some of those poems don't have names attached to them. So it's impossible to know how other they are, how close they are. And I think that's OK. I think that's OK. And there's a kind of strain or strand, I think, inside of us as humans that connects us to other folks. Even if they're in Nigeria, or if they're a migrant at the border, or if they're in a subway. And so thank you for, for, for engaging with this, engaging with each other. Uh, have a, Rest, good rest of Sunday, cooler Sunday, hopefully. Thank you so very much. Whoa.
Get some feedback. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now is the time when we take up a collection. And as most of you know, we share the Sunday collection. Half goes to uh, keeping our programs going. The other half is for a nonprofit group that shares our values. Today, our shared charity is Uptown Stories. Uptown Stories inspires kids to discover and develop their inner voices in a diverse community of writers. Based in Upper Manhattan, they offer small group writing workshops for children ages 8 to 15, led by master teachers and professional authors. To ensure their workshops are accessible to all children, tuition is pay what you can. Uptown Stories creates an exciting, challenging, and supportive community in which